Hi and let's continue. I am Jody and you're watching Geeking with Jody, the Elpic series on Elpic One. We've reached where we have to be able to customize or write simple scripts. The weight is four, it's high because it's important. But the point is you should be able to customize existing scripts or write simple new Apache scripts. You don't need to be familiar with every aspect. You don't need to feel that you can do whatever you want. No, it's better to feel that. Search, try, troubleshoot, learn new things, and you can do whatever anyone can does in a scripting language. Anyway, I will show you the standard SH syntaxes, loops, and tests. We will use command substitution, test return values, execute chained commands, conditional mailing to the super users, select a script through shebang cool let's start first things first combining commands you know it already if you want to run some commands one after another you can say cd temp semicolon ls first it will run the first part then goes to the next one if you don't have a command, another command, another command, another command, another command, will run this, then runs this, then runs this, then runs this. Good, but not super useful. A more fun thing is and, and, or. This is called logical or. This is called logical and. I said vice versa. Anyway, this is or, this is and. But how does this works? Imagine you're saying I want to date someone using the and features. I want, I want someone who is and and more than 25 years old okay i said and so all of these should be true so if someone is checking to see his friend is good for you or not we'll try the first one if because you have condition one and condition two and condition three so if the first one is okay it will go and check the next one if the second one is okay it will go and test the next one if someone sees a girl who is i don't know 18 years old this is not works in your condition so no need to check the next ones this is how logical and works or on the other hand you say i want to buy a house which has a uh, three bedrooms or this is pipe shift and whatever is on on top of the enter on my system three bedrooms or two kitchens or has a pool so when someone is checking this, we'll check this one. If this is true, we'll check the next one. If this is true, we'll check the next one. But if this is false, it won't check the next one. Just imagine something in your mind on a normal life and you will understand how this works. But why this is super cool? Because you can say CD temp and LS. You are telling the system to run this. And if this was successful, run this. If this was successful, run the next one, if you had something there. So this will go to the temp and will run the ls. But if I say cd blah blah and ls, it just complains that blah blah, no directory blah blah. Never try to run a nonsense ls. This is cool because, for example, you can have a backup script and say 
tar create file my backup file these things and copy the backup file to this place it will run this one if successful will go to the next one and copies the backup if this is not successful it will never try to run this in an example with or you can say run my backup or mail the root add mail the root users that backup didn't work we will see how to do this later practically you are saying take the backup if it's successful it's enough done if this is not successful go to the next one and mail the user this is very easy to manage much easier than having an if condition so that's why you need to know how to combine commands using logical or and logical and and this is the format of the or and this is the format of the and for sure you noted there are two ands and two ors because you know normally one and is used when you want to run a command in the background and also this is how c language works and c is very very close to the unix word unix started with the uh, assembly but later they rewrote everything in c and not this and normal and and uh in this session we will also see the return values which comes from the c anyway now you know that how to combine commands it is time to check how to start writing shell scripts you've already saw this for example i can have a small script and say vim my editor my script.sh on the first line you will have a line which is called shebang like this it's hashtag ds or whatever you call it exclamation mark and the program executable which is responsible to run these commands so if you are writing a python script you may go with user bin python this is what executable which is responsible to run your program so you say this one for example you say echo starting and then you will say cd temp touch a file i will tell you what is this and echo now let's have an ls ltrh but i only need the last three lines and then echo done uh, i will use tmax if you don't know tmax you can search on my videos and watch my tmax video it's very useful you can split your session and everything or you can do any way you like vim my script so you will have this here if i want to run this i have to make it executable chmod plus x and i will or you can say chmod 755 these fives are for executables my script now it is executable and i can run it like this when it is executable and i write and i run it like this you know why i'm adding this normally you can say i want to run temp my scripts or saying locally that i am here and i want to run this on the dos word you can only write my script but on linux word you can't the path does not include your current location so you need to say explicitly that i want to run this for the security reasons when you do this and just say okay i have an executable and i want again i have these headphones oh <laughs> Uh, and when you do like this, the bash will look into the first line, will find the shebang, and will run your program using this. So it's kind of equivalent to doing bash my script or doing sh my script. I'm just breaking it and I'm not running it. So my script, it writes starting here touch has an error missing file operand touch needs something to touch touch creates a file or updates the time 
and then goes to the temp, touches the file, shows the ls only last three lines, and then writes done. What is this? This is the first parameter of the program. If you run your program and give it some parameters, the first parameter always is in this variable. If you have another parameter, it will be in $2. The number of the parameters you have is always saved in this variable. There are some specific variables. So dollar number sign will show the number of the parameters you have. Dollar one will show the first parameter, second parameter, and to the millionth parameter. So <coughs> I have my script, Jadi. It writes starting, goes to temp, touches a file called Jadi, so creates Jadi, and then echoes ls and then echo. Then ls the last three lines and echo. We wrote our script and it's running. This is cool. You know the shebang line, you know about the variables, you also learned a couple of new variables like $1, $2, and dollar number sign. And it is good to know about command substitution. Substitutes a command. What does it mean? Imagine I want to have a variable with the output of a command. Files equals ls. Echo files. Unfortunately, files equals ls. I want to have a command as ls. Run it and put the output into files. This is the trick. And shell. I'm talking about bash. <coughs> Sorry. And in many other shells, if you have this combination and a command here, the command executes, the output will replace everything here. So if I have this file is command substitution with ls, ls runs, everything will be replaced by the result of the ls and files will have a new value. Cool, yes? You can do this with any other command. For example, very common one is the date. In your scripts. Date normally shows you the date. You can say I want a date with this specific format. Nothing at the moment. But you can say I want the year. It will give you the year. Then a dash. Then the month. Then the date. Cool. Then I want the hour and minutes. Instead of creating this file as a normal JADI or whatever is provided in the parameter, it's very common to create a file with this in the beginning or end in the, or in the middle. This is the current date and time. So I want this, the output of this to be there. I copy this, I will go there, I say touch and paste it here. But at the moment this doesn't work. I need to do this. Because this is done a lot, what we do is we use the tick back or back tick. This is a shortcut for that thing. I can say date, no, today equals this. I had to do it like this, right? And I can say echo today or now would be better than today because it contains the time too. A shortcut is doing the today equals this two back ticks and your command here ls echo today it will show the ls. So here what I'm doing is I'm saying touch backtick and backtick. So run this command, replace the output here, which will be the time dash dollar one, whatever provided in the dash. 
if I run it now, I would have script my file. Ow. This is another script. My script, my file. This is what we created. It creates this. Didn't I save this? Maybe not. I haven't saved it on the first time. So it creates a file which is called 2023 04 10 14. <coughs> oh, sorry. For my file. This is how you do this. This is very common pattern to be used on backups on the file generation and these kind of stuff. And let's talk about different methods of executing scripts. And then on the next video, I will continue this section with conditions, loops, and everything. To execute your script, we have different methods. We already covered practically all of them. One is my script after making your script executable. So what I did was give executable to my script or uh, my script. <coughs> you already know about SUID from other sessions. And then I can run it like this and the bash will run it based on the shebang line. Or you can directly say bash my script. You say, okay, read this and run it with bash. You don't need the shebang anymore. Or you can say sh my script, which is a simpler version of bash. Practically in the beginning, we had the sh, then we had bash. In some systems, these are even connected to each other, are the same thing. But for the compatibility reason, both are executables of the bash scripts. But there is one more thing to know and that's the exec command remember what i told you on the previous lesson when you have a bash and you run something whatever say a ping a sub process is created by bash inside that ping runs whatever you do it's like this and when this is finished this finishes and you return to your bash in some cases, we want to replace the program we are running, replace bash with the program we are running. In that case, you should run exec. But let me show that one on my own computer. I'm on my own computer. I can say say I'm on I'm on this old session. Okay, this is my cause. I created another tab here. See, I have a new tab. This was my cause. I created a new tab here and run exec ls. What happens? <coughs> I have a bash here. Normally, without the exec, the bash would spawn a new shell will run the ls here it would show the results then i would return to my own bash so that's it better but what happens if i do this do this in this case bash sees the exec internal command replaces itself with the new command with the ls ls prints the data then finishes and this window is closed because there is no bash anymore you're back for example a better example for you to see is exec ping i'm pinging somewhere but i'm doing it with exec so my bash in normal, it would go like this. When ping finished, I would be back on the bash. But in this case, bash replaced itself with the new command ping. So when the ping is finished, there is no bash. So this window will be closed. I will do a control C and you will see it. This is another method of running script. If you want to not to fork a new uh, bash and run the commander, but to replace the current bash with the one with the command you are running. Sometimes it might be useful. 
anyway back to the conditions on the next video and i will drink some water to stop coughing